Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview of the energy industry and some of the things that are happening there, and then a, examples of different use cases that ESB has implemented to be a bit smarter and use our data better. So just introduce myself. So I went to Trinity and did an undergraduate. I was quite interested in data, so I went on to UCD, did an MSc. Um, then I went into Care Group, and then Bank of Ireland, and then finally I'm in ESB now, just um, a year. So you can see they're three quite different industries, but they all seem to have the same problem of using their data to make decisions better. So surprisingly, ESB was actually quite a data-driven company. This picture is taken from ESB archives. Um, so it's a pencil and paper diagram of the flow of the River Shannon, and it was taken when they were developing Ardna Crusha um, back in the 1930s, so about 90 years ago. Um, thankfully, they did move on to digital records and using computers, um, probably sooner than the 1990s. Um, and now today, data is kind of quite key to a lot of things we do, and we've also moved on to looking at unstructured data as well as text to try and understand sentiment. And also, data is now included in a lot of the products that we use. So our customers in Electric Ireland get meter readings and trends in their monthly usage um, over time. So the energy industry itself has undergone quite a big transform. So the traditional energy industry, Energy 1.0, would have been where just power was flowing one direction and also information was flowing one direction. We had quite traditional generators, um, like coal, oil, and gas. The meter in a person's house was just a clock that was read occasionally. And also the usage of energy was for quite simple things like kettles, light bulbs, and probably ovens. Um, but now energy industry has transformed, is going through quite a big disruption, where everything's a lot more digital, and the IoT devices are playing a huge role in the homes. So people are now actually able to see their energy usage for each device. They're also able to monitor their heat pumps and reduce or increase their heat to reduce or increase the amount of energy they're consuming. Houses can also now produce their own energy, um, which I don't think was something our grid initially thought would happen. Um, but now it's being rolled out at such a big level and volume that the network side of ESB is looking at how do we make our grid stable so that when 50 people plug in their electric cars that the lights don't go out in the whole estate. Um, and that's finally the energy industry. So through ESB so far we have managed to work with a lot of different parts of ESB because it's vertically integrated. So we've managed to work with Electric Ireland a little bit as well as with generations and networks. We've also worked with a few of the startups based down in Planet Line, um, being one of them, um, Home Hero and Certainly Plus. And we've also started to look internationally uh, with ESB International at the international clients. Um, also, you'll notice Pieta House is up there. So as part of our corporate social responsibility, um, we did a project with Pieta House um, to try to help them to make more data-driven decisions and to get more benefit out of their data. So this is just an idea of the different value levels that you can gain through your organization. Um, so the first value is looking at the data and trying to understand what happened. So that's just describing an event. Second is using the business understanding to try and diagnose why did it happen? Does this actually make sense, what the data is saying? Um, this is usually done by a BI reporting team, but sometimes there might not be a BI reporting team. So for a project, we'll bring a client the whole way through from looking at what happened to why it happened and then maybe into predictive or machine learning um, as we would like to be doing. Um, so these are different stages. I'm just going to give a different use case for the four stages. Um, and then just within the projects we've worked on so far, there's kind of two. The top two are mostly based around resources. Um, like asset optimization and the predictive maintenance. That's been mentioned a few times today. Um, and also we look at safety and behavior. 
So this is again different types of data and also then in Electric Ireland we'd have looked at customer insights and segmentation. Um, so this is an example of the first level of a descriptive project. So all the data was being stored on a SharePoint site. Um, this stored, I think it was, bids that ESB had made for international clients. And there was about 120 countries involved. I can't remember how many clients. Um, but it was all being stored on SharePoint. It was quite difficult for the bid manager to get a handle on how many bids they had and what stage of the process they were in. Um, so what we did was we worked with the domain expert who was our bid manager, who was luckily also our end user, um, to build a dashboard that would help him to actually see the big picture. Um, so before we built this dashboard, um, he spent about three to four days a month compiling all the bids into an Excel and then creating a presentation. So we've given back a few days each month. <laughs> um, and what he can see now quite quickly and easily and in real time as well is where bids are at and actually when a bid is due. So he can see that a bid submission is coming up or that he has five bid submissions coming up and is going to be really busy. And also the other benefit that he's realized is he can see in a specific region like Asia that he's not winning a lot of contracts for a specific product, but he's actually winning a lot, say, in the Americas. So he can then change his focus or change his teams in the areas to reflect that. So the second type of project that we've worked on is trying to use the business understanding to validate what we found in the data. So this was trying to understand our competitors' cash flows of revenue for a specific product called DS3 products. Um, so what we used was publicly available SEMO data um, that's based around generations and availability. So basically, if you have a difference between your availability and your generation, you get paid for one of the products. Um, so this was used in Python to develop the code behind it, and then we just presented it in Tableau for the business users. Um, and this probably wouldn't have been possible to do without the business because the rules were so specific to calculating the revenues. Um, so that what this let them see was to gauge how much revenue their competitors were making and to see their different strategies, and maybe where we weren't doing as well as them and could probably change our strategy for the better. And um, The third project that we did is with Planet Nine. So this is a startup. They're just entering into the UK market, and what they're going to do is they're going to offer their customers the ability to buy energy at wholesale prices. So for a customer, that sounds great because the wholesale market is much cheaper than the commercial market that they will be buying off traditionally. But for a customer, they need to know how much they need to buy so they can lock in their price or they can hedge it. And so for this, we use smart meter data um, one year smart meter data per customer to try to forecast their usage of energy and to let the customer make the better, more informed decision. Um, so this, the ultimate benefit of this was to reduce the cost for the customers and to keep them happier. This is the third or fourth use case that I have. Um, so this is a descriptive one that's still ongoing in development. Um, so we're working with ESB networks to ensure that we can try, predict when an outage will occur and the severity and location of the outage. Um, so what we have is we have weather data and also historical outage data. The outage data includes reasons for outage such as weather or fault. So we're just looking at the weather ones and where they occurred to try to identify, can we get down to, say, we need five crews in Cork um, because the weather is indicating that's going to be the worst hit as opposed to having the whole country having five crews because we're not too sure where it's going to need it. Um, so again, the benefits of this would be minimum disruption for our customers, um, restoring service faster, and again, a better, better customer service. Um, so then finally, how we organize our projects. So then we use a project cycle. And um, generally, the first step is we'll explore the data. 
Then we'll go back to the business to present our findings and to ask them for a bit of guidance on is there anything else they'd like to see? And then they'll have some further questions or specific areas. And then finally, we do a handover and review session. So for us, it's more important to do an initial proof of concept and explore and present back to see if we're going the right direction or if it's useful. And then after that feedback to keep iterating through it. And um, so that's really all. Thanks. Thank you.